Hi, hello, and welcome to the show. Today, I want to talk about Hedy Lamar. The Austrian-born Hedy Lamar is another very fascinating star of old Hollywood with a rich life and a story to tell. And we can boil them down to four things. And probably some of them will surprise you. They surprised me. So, Hedy Lamar invented a patent for developing wireless and Bluetooth. So, actually, her invention is the basis for GPS and all the Bluetooth applications that we have. So, her legacy lives on in all our devices in our home. She was a very political person, anti-fascist, working to help the Allied nations to succeed against Nazi, Nazi Germany. And she was a headliner at MGM and was made to become the most beautiful star of Hollywood. And that is kind of a mixture, isn't it? So what is her story? Hedy Lamar was born, actually, Hedwig Kiesler in 1914 in Vienna, Austria, with her parents being Austrian on the paternal side and Hungarian on the maternal side. So she's not American. She received a great education and learned to play the piano, to dance ballet and to speak in multiple languages. She was interested in the arts early on and she started out in the Austrian film industry, which back then really was a thing. So there were a lot of great movies being made in Germany and Austria. So already her fifth movie of all promoted her to being scandalous. On the one hand, because there was a lengthy scene with her bathing naked in a lake and then walking in her birthday suit through a forest. And on the other hand, because her face was filmed in a love scene. Basically, that was all that was filmed throughout the scene. But during that scene, she was faking an orgasm. And that was the first time ever that something like that was caught on film. And it was like a huge scandal. It actually won an award at a Venice Film Festival and it was thought of to be very creative. Throughout most of Europe, it was considered a very artistic work, but not in the US and not in Germany. The film was banned in most theatres and when shown, it was with an advisory line of being dangerous to younger audiences. But the film caught the attention of her first husband. It was a Austrian military arms merchant and munitions manufacturer by the name of Franz Mandel. And he was 15 years a major. And allegedly, to the sources that I found, he was the third richest man in Austria and, and basically a madman. He kept her virtually a prisoner in his vast estate and he forced her to give up acting altogether. And he even tried to delete all the copies from a movie and to make it vanish. He forced her to change her faith from Jewish to Catholic and he made her to be just this pretty accessory that he would take to the banquets and receptions that either he hosted or that he was invited to, as well as to all his business meetings. And as Mandel was dealing with both Mussolini as well as Hitler, both of these dictators were guests at the Mandel mansion at least once. And Hedy was assigned to, as the pretty accessory at the arm of her husband, led to three things. First, she got introduced to the field of applied sciences, and that nurtured one of her talents and later hobbies, and that was inventing and science, because munition and arms really are based on technology and on scientific findings. Second, she strongly opposed the fascists, and being faced with them regularly during those meetings, it just grew her political opposition and she got the urge to be active against them. And third, her husband's total neglect of her, it nurtured her desire to just escape. And after four years of marriage, she finally fled to Paris and then to London to escape her marriage as well as the Nazis. And as with all good stories, luck was on Hedy Lamar's side. She met Louis B. Meyer, the founder of MGM Studios in London, and bought tickets for exactly the same liner that he took to get back to the States. And during this trip, she convinced him to sign her right away and to the salary that she demanded. And it worked. So her Hollywood year started. And in true Hollywood fashion, Hedy had to change her name. 
So Hedwig became Hedy, and her last name was changed from Kiesler to Lamar. It was Lamar in homage to Barbara Lamar, who was once dubbed the most beautiful woman in the world, and the suggestion actually came from Louis B. Meyer's wife, who was a fan of Barbara's. So, Hedy Lamar's first movie, All Sheer, was a hit with audiences right away, and also subsequent movies were received well by the public. But her problem, she was reduced, yet again, to the role of a silent, beautiful accessory and didn't have much dramatic impact on the movies and hardly any lines, if at all. And although, obviously, she was hailed for her legendary beauty. Her most iconic movie, besides Ecstasy, where she faked the orgasm, is Samson and Delilah, where she's barely clad and incredibly beautiful. So, Hedy founded her own production company to get more demanding roles and to create the roles that she actually wanted to play. But the movies that were more thrillers, were an image overhaul for Lamar, and they went over budget, and a comedy she tried also flopped. So she went back to being hired as an actress, this time by Paramount for Samson and Delilah, and later she went back to MGM. But her career started to falter, and she only acted sparingly and stopped for good in 1966. During her bored days at MGM, where she simply had to look good and basically had no lines to learn or rehearse, she tried to stay intellectually engaged and took up her favorite pastime, inventing. And apparently her trailer was always full of equipment and things she could tinker with. And when World War II started, Hedy wanted to use her brains for the good and apply to the National Inventors Council. But they denied her access and told her she should go on a tour to support a war effort by giving out kisses to men and encouraging them to buy war bonds. When she heard about the proposition of radio-controlled torpedoes, but that the enemy would probably be able to jam the guidance system, she invented, together with befriended composer George Antail, a frequency-hopping technology that would make it hard for an outsider to decipher They came up with the idea because the two of them had to sing 16 pianos with a movie. And the technology behind both of those was punch-holed paper, which would later be translated for the torpedoes with pneumatic controls, as it apparently already was in the pianos. This technology had not been new, but the application was new, and the two got granted a patent after being nudged to file for one by none other than Charles Kettering of General Motors. Sadly, the technology was not put in use during the war and long forgotten about. Only later, around the 1960s, the Americans started to use this technology for the battleships and it was used as the basis for wireless and Bluetooth. It was only after her death that Hedy Lamarr was inducted to the Inventors Hall of Fame and several scientific institutes and prizes have adopted her namesake since then. In her private life, Hedy Lamarr wasn't fulfilled either. She was married six times, but less than 20 years in total and had three kids. She actually got estranged from her first son who was born out of wedlock with the father and she sent him away when he was only 12 years old, apparently because he had done something that immensely hurt her. He actually grew to become a police officer and killed a 14-year-old black girl. So maybe there's more to this story than known. Unfortunately, in later years, Hedy Lamar was caught shoplifting and got very secluded. She hardly ever met people in person, and her only means of communication was the telephone, which she used about six to seven hours a day. And she died at the age of 85 due to heart disease. She was beautiful and smart and very lonely. And it keeps me thinking that you need to stick to the things that you love, not try to be someone or something else that you actually don't want to be. Did she want to be an accessory? No, she didn't. Yet, she made a career out of it. She was the wife of a man who just wanted her to be beautiful. She became an actress, which probably paid good money, but she was reduced again to be a beautiful accessory. And, and this does something with your mind and with your self-esteem if you're always being kept in a corner and in a certain niche that you actually don't want to be in. And it always makes me wonder, why did she give up inventing? Why didn't she pursue it with more vigor, with more dedication, with more resilience? Why didn't she go to the university and get a degree and get really, you know, in the scientific field as she was apparently very 
adept at this, at science and at inventing. So this might have been a more fulfilling way of her than to be the beautiful accessory and repeat the pattern of getting married, getting divorced and not finding fulfillment in any of those. She even invented other things like she updated a traffic light and she invented a tablet that you threw into water and it carbonated it. It didn't taste very well, apparently, but she invented that. So why did she stop? After that, she really didn't do anything anymore, although it apparently was her thing. So I always wonder if she would have been happier if she had stayed that course, gotten that formal education in science and worked in that field all day long and not being reduced to the beautiful accessory. Maybe it had been too difficult back then to break into these rather male-dominated areas and she didn't want to do that because she was not brought up to that. Or maybe she didn't want to fight another fight. Maybe she was just tired. But I think it's a really interesting story to reflect on. She was one of the most beautiful women. She was exotic to those who saw her. She was hailed as the most beautiful woman in the world during that time. And she was really, really smart. So it is a tragic story. And I just keep thinking that probably she was suffering from some trauma and just didn't manage to fight against those deep inner beliefs that she had about herself and her role in the world. So, yes, she was stunningly beautiful. But more importantly, she's the brains behind some of the most connected devices that we have. And probably you have an item in your household where her basic technology is included in. So keep her in mind. Brains and beauty, you can have both and you can use them both and you can build a beautiful, unique and extraordinary life based on who you are, no matter what it is that you have and do. So I hope you got inspired by that story to fight, to go on, to find your way, to not be cornered in and watch some of the movies that Hedy Lamar did. I haven't seen Ecstasy yet. I don't even know if you can watch it anymore, but definitely Sams and Delilah. Watch that. With that, I wish you a very nice week. Have a good one and I will talk to you next week. Bye.